the more you work to change and grow, the better equipped you are to handle the various challenges presented to you in the office, on the job, and at home. And it helps you to be able to have success in your pursuits. If you study the most successful people, if, if you read the book, The Millionaire Next Door, if you read the book, The Millionaire Mindset, any of those kind of books, you're going to find out that those types of people believe in constant improvement. Hey, this is Greg McAfee, and welcome to The Greg McAfee Show. Now let's get started. Hey, Greg McAfee here, and welcome to The Greg McAfee Show once again. Uh, today we've got some good stuff. I want to talk about um, why and how entrepreneurs have uh, continually improved themselves and why they need to. So I'll get right to that. But right now, you guys, if you're not subscribed uh, to the YouTube or the pod channel, uh, feel free to do so each week. I put this content out uh, because I really want to see each and every one of you succeed and grow your business. So hit that subscribe button right there and turn on those notifications. And on every Tuesday, when I put out a new episode, you'll be one of the first to see it. Okay, great. Okay. Um, also, if you've not purchased my book, uh, it's on gregmcafee.com or it's on amazon.com. But if you own a small business, even though it's not HVAC business, this book's for you. Um, it's basically how I went from $274, uh, to multi-millions in sales, um, and very healthy profits as well. Anyone can do a lot of sales, but managing properly helps, uh, earn those profits and make those profits rather. Okay. So want to get started today on, um, I thought about, uh, I'll go over something. I'll go over this book here in a minute uh, by Andy Stanley. It's a study guide. I'll tell you a little bit about it in a minute. Um, but I want to talk about um, we must put um, an effort toward improving. Improving is motivating. Improving is doing something to make yourself better. And I look at it as a business owner, an entrepreneur of constant improvement. My, my whole vision, my whole dream, my standard of doing business has to do with constantly improving, constant improvement. And there's actually nothing myst mystical about this. It's, um, it's what we do. It's because the more you work to change and grow, the better equipped you are to handle the various challenges presented to you in the office, on the job, and at home. And it helps you to be able to have success in your pursuits. If you study the most successful people, if, if you read the book, The Millionaire Next Door, if you read the book, The Millionaire Mindset, any of those kind of books, you're going to find out that those types of people believe in constant improvement. You don't just get to a level and stop. I've, I've never seen anyone who is extremely successful stop improving. It just doesn't work that way, folks. And as an entrepreneur, especially, self-improvement can benefit us even more than others because we're constantly learning new skills and innovating our businesses. And that should be part of our job description. So if you're not innovative and you're not making things happen, which I do have a chapter on that in the book, in my book, 
Um, it you should have a strong thirst for knowledge. You should have a strong thirst for improvement, and you should have a strong uh, thirst for getting to that next level, whatever that next level might be. In 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 some people's uh, world, it could be going from three hundred thousand to a million. In other people's world, it could be just getting systems in place and sleeping better at night. In other people's worlds, it could just be um, lessening the debt load. So whatever that next level is for you, if you're not constantly improving and you're not constantly reading and you're not constantly uh, watching um, videos on YouTube on the how-to, how to do this or how to do that... um, I have friends who are in the hundreds of millions of dollars per year in business, and they they are constantly reading. They are constantly studying different things on how to improve, and that's what it takes to get there. And, you know, I hate to say this, but I'm going to say that. I'm going to say this. If you aren't, you're never going to get past where you are today. You've got to want it. You've got to want it bad. And most entrepreneurs want it. They want to know how to get to that next level. They want to know how to achieve that next goal. And they're happy to put in the time and to put in the investment to do that. Okay, so number one is putting your best effort toward improving. Number two, you have to change with your industry. And for for those guys out there that are you know in the trades, in the small business, whether you're in the lawn care, landscaping, roofing, home improvement, you know, plumbing, electrical, heating and air. I knock that darn thing over every time. Um, I'm going to redo this office, by the way. Uh, it's going to be really cool. I've got a new bar height table coming in with bar stools on both sides. We're going to have more cameras and more views. And some of this foam's coming down behind me. And... Uh, I've got some bookshelves going up with some cool American um, patriotic. I served in the Marine Corps, so I'm definitely going to have some Marine Corps stuff up there. I love Harley Davidsons. I'm definitely going to have that up there. And I love guns. So I might even have some cool guns in here, okay? Um, And I love cars, but I don't know how that would work. Uh, But anyway, let's go back. I got off off, uh, subject matter there for a minute. Um... Whether if you're gonna if you're gonna be good at what you do, you've got to change with your industry. You've got to change with the times. I think I mentioned in a couple podcasts back that when R22 was basically the only refrigerant that they put in um, residential air conditioning and heat pump equipment, um, when they did come out with the R410A, we were the first. And we were out of a garage then. I was still working in my garage. We probably had five employees. We were the first to install an R410A environmentally sound heat pump system in Dayton, Ohio. And um, I told you guys when I when I was in, I was my only salesman. So when I went out on a call, I would ask the customer, "Do you want the old stuff or or the new stuff?" And the majority would say the new. Some would say, "What's the price difference?" But when I said this old is going to go away and it's going to become very expensive, do you want the new stuff? The majority went with the new. So we were only stocking our 410A equipment, and that's how we worded it. It's environmentally sound. So you got to change with your industry. Our industries change daily, weekly, monthly, annually, but daily. Things are changing daily today. Things are changing faster than they've ever changed in business. So whatever business you're in, Change is going to happen, and you can easily get blindsided if you're left behind. I know a lot of I know a lot of business owners that have got blindsided because they're not keeping their eye on the ball. They're they're spending, like I said before, they're spending more time in yesterday and today, and they're not looking out tomorrow to see what's going to happen and what's going to change. And that, and that has to happen. You've got to be looking. You've got to be changing. You've got to be adapting. And you've got to be shifting your, your market. Um, you know, if, if you're in an area where there's a lot of oil heat, um, 
And however, gas lines are coming in all over the place now, and heat pumps are at an all-time high efficient, uh, where where a um, heat pump would heat very well, and for a lot less than the oil heat, the fuel oil heat. If you're in an area like that, you better start you better start thinking about your market and where is it going? Because if you're only focused on um, oil heat, you're going to get lost and uh, you're going to get blindsided and left behind. Um, so here, quick story. First company, first heating and air conditioning company I worked for, I left Firestone. Um, they were the URW and I, I got pretty good pay. I took a 50% pay cut to get into heating and air conditioning. The first company I worked for, this guy, his name was Harold, um, owner, bought it off the original, the founder. This guy was probably the most knowledgeable guy as far as um, heating and air, um, engineering, um, the technical side of things. And he really got into it. And he was so far into that, he, he couldn't grow a business because he only seen heating and air. He didn't see business. He didn't see customer service. He didn't see the future. And it caused him a lot of stress. Um, but anyway, there used to be an oil furnace. Maybe somebody out there would have heard of this. I don't know. But it used to be called a Timken. And a Timken had a really unique structure of how the burner lit and how all this stuff happened. So here I am in heating and air conditioning. I'm thinking about the future, right? I mean, I didn't know anything. I knew enough to be dangerous, actually. I'm thinking about the future. I'm thinking about where am I, where's Greg McAfee going in this heating and air world? Um, and he's teaching me how a Timken worked. I think they had a total of three Timkins. Um, now, this was back in like 1987, and I think he had three Timken customers. And he was the only one in the area that could keep these furnaces going. So he's teaching me how they work. Do you think I needed to know how they worked? I could have cared less. I listened and I understood the concept, but I would have been much more interested in Let's talk about the future. Where's the, you know, where's the future going in heating and air? So think about that with your guys, your team, your staff, your business, and your world. Are you stuck in yesterday? Or are you thinking about tomorrow? Because yesterday is only going to get you what you got. So these things, these changes happen all the time. And we have to lean toward the future. And there's going to be a lot of te technical advancements in heating and air. Uh, but there's also a lot of advancements in, in business. Uh, things are happening. You've got to stay up on it. You know, this all this PPP stuff. You've got to, you've got to know what's out there. You've got to know what's going on. You've got to have uh, a good banker. You've got to have a good CPA. You've got to make those things happen. And uh, so it's, it becomes fun. It becomes it's an it's a it's like a natural high for me to just continue to dominate my market, to continue to come up with ideas, to continue to come up um, to surround myself rather with people and creative people and people who who um, grow their own businesses to the next level. That, that excites me, and I that's what I think about and that's what I do. Um, we have to train our people to do what they do best, and I need to be doing what I do best for my company. And uh, so think about this. You have to improve yourself to improve your business, and and that's a fact. If you're not improving yourself, your business is not going to change. It starts with you. It starts with you at the top. You've got to change. You've got to ad uh, adapt to what things are coming down the pike and there's a direct connection between the success of your business and your personal state of mind. Trust me, if you're, if you're not learning and you're stagnant, I guarantee you your business is stagnant too. And it is everything you do, including how you run your business, 
is an extension of who you are and what you know. And I'll tell you, I don't, it would be embarrassing if, if my business wasn't growing. I mean, I, we've had down years. I'm not, I'm not saying that, but it's embarrassing if your business never grows. I've coached, I've coached business owners where they have said, they have said these words. Well, five years ago, we were doing a million, but we've been stuck at 600,000 for the past three years. I'm like, are you kidding me? I don't know if I can help you. I mean, I'm, I want to be serious here. I don't know if I can help you because you haven't done anything to help yourself. You haven't done anything to improve your business. You haven't done anything to improve yourself. Your business will benefit and it will be a game changer when you step up your game and you want to improve yourself. Your, your business will appreciate it. Your team will appreciate it. And it will translate into success. I mean, I, I want to be successful in what I do. And I'm not talking about making the most money. Money is a byproduct of doing things well in my world. I'm not chasing money. But I will tell you this, when you do things well and you take care of the customer and you're ahead of the game and you're constantly improving, money will chase you. You don't have to chase it. Ask any successful person who's focused on doing what they do best. Money chases them. And we've got to gain an edge over the competition. You know, there's a lot of competitors out there. I've had people in our boot camps um, we have about 500 companies in um, the Dayton area. We have about 500 heating and air companies, give or take. Um, and I said before, about 20 to 30% of those actually have brick and mortar, whether they lease or buy, and, and the rest are, are, are still working out of their home or truck. And uh, that's fine and dandy, you know, if, if you're focused and that's what all you want to do, that's fine and dandy. I never put anybody down for that. Um, but it's... Um, We've got about 500, give or take, and um, I, I told you we worked our way to number one, uh, top of mind, residential market. We've, we've stuck there, and uh, we've had all kinds of arrows shot at us, front and back and sideways, but we've stuck there, and we want to stick there, and we constantly review um, third-party reviews and third-party um, stats on where we at and where do we fall. And I think I've showed you some of those back probably um, somewhere around number four or five of, of my podcast. And uh, so you, um, you have to improve yourself to improve your business, and you have to gain an edge over the competition. You have to do things that they're not willing to do. And I don't care what size you are. Uh, I just told someone the other day they, they were doing about a half a million in sales, and, and they, they only had, uh, it was them and a helper and sometimes a son uh, when school was out. And I said, you guys got to do what others aren't willing to do. He said, what do you mean? I said, well, the, the bigger companies, they're not going to advertise, you know, no job too small. They're not going to advertise on a grocery store bulletin board. They're not going to go door to door and leave a flyer. And they're not going to make phone calls as much as you can. You have more time on your hands right now than you ever will. So when you discover, when you discover and start to use self-improvement to your advantage, it's like you've uncovered a secret. It's a secret to success. It is not every business owner focuses on consistently improving themselves. And when you tap into that secret, um, you will see things change for you and your business. And many business owners ignore that aspect altogether. And that's that's ridiculous. And that's why they're not achieving what they want to achieve. So this morning I was in at 6 a.m. Um, and I popped in, um, I'm old school. I popped in a DVD. I'm doing a series, Andy Stanley, Better Decisions, Fewer Regrets. It's a, This is a study guide. It's not a book. It's a study guide. And I fill it out and I, and I, I want to improve and I want less regrets in my life. And if I can improve my life, I will improve my business. 
And so I work hard toward that. And I'm, I'm almost always watching some sort of uh, study guide. I've got two in my cabinet that I haven't even took the wrapper off yet. So I've got the two next ones coming up. And it's all about self-improvement. It's all about making me a better person. And yes, I still read a lot and I, I do my uh, Bible devotions and my Bible reading. I'm a firm believer in that, um, even over this. And most of what I most of what Andy Stanley is actually a pastor and a speaker. So most of what I, I listen to is, is going to be more on a uh, biblically based uh, concept. So you've got to gain the edge over your competitor and you've got to set the tone for excellence in your company. And that's, that's one of the things on my, my McAfee way is, um, striving for perfection. We strive for perfection. We know we're not going to be perfect. We don't walk on water, um, but we're going to hit excellence along the way. So as the owner, as the leader of your business, by the way, you are the leader of your business, right? Then act like it, okay? Because you're the leader. You, some of you started this thing. Some of you purchased it, and now you're running it. You're the leader. Um, and it's clear to others when you're constantly improving yourself. They will see this, and they will appreciate it. And they... Um, it will improve you both personally and professionally. And, and then you're able to set the example for your entire team. I push my leadership team to read, read more. I push my team to read. I gave them all a free copy of my book because I wanted them to learn more about my history of McAfee and a little bit more about me than what they knew. And I'd say a large portion of them read the book. Some read some of the book. And some probably never picked it up, but I can't control that. Um, I do encourage it. There is a point where a lot of business owners um, uh, fall short, and that's self-improvement. They fall short in self-improvement. Some of them are like Harold, and they're so worried about learning more about how a furnace and air conditioner works than how to grow a business. So I want to leave you with this. I want to leave you with build a story in your life. In other words, if someone had to tell your life story, what would it be like? If you're married, how would your um, spouse tell your story? If you have kids, how would your children tell your story? I want you to focus on building a story for your life. And and you might say, Greg, I've made a lot of mistakes and my, my story is not too good. And my business is hanging on by a thread. Well, I've got good news for you. Tomorrow is a new day and you get to start all over again. And you can do things that will change what you've done from yesterday. You can do things to improve your tomorrow you can improve your today, of course, but you can you can start tomorrow. You can start today, but you can start and you can make a new day because what do you want your business story to be? Do you want to just you want to have someone say he just barely got by? He employed two people and he barely got by. Or do you want it to read that he provided several jobs in our community? And he supported our community, and he did a lot of stuff for children, and he and he ran a great company that was very profitable. He paid his bills on time. He was known for that, or she was known for that. And they that you did a lot of great things. It, it's up to you. The choice is yours. It, it's entirely up to you. It's a decision. And yeah, everybody has bad times, but you'll get through them. They'll, you'll work your way through them. They'll 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 dissipate, and you'll have better times. Just hang in there. Keep working hard. Work smart. Take care of people, um, because life is short. And I was looking at my my devotional this morning, and I'm you know I'm already on today's February twenty fourth here, and I just remember. I mean, we just had Christmas, and it's already February twenty fourth, 
And in a few days, it's going to be March 1st already. We're going to be into the March, the marches. And, you know, so life is short. Make the best of it. Avoid wasting time on things that don't matter. Don't worry about the Timken. The Timken's going to be extinct. You don't need to know about the Timken or anything else like the Timken. Change is difficult for all of us, especially if it's not your idea. If it's your idea, it's the greatest thing in the world. But if it's not your idea, it's hard to get people to change. But if you really want to grow as a person and make yourself stronger in places that you're broke and and you can make the decision to change yourself and achieve that growth, which will change your business and change your life. And that's all possible. And trust me, I'm a living testimony to that. So I wanted to give you some stuff to think about today. Um, It's challenging. It's not easy. If everyone was doing it, if it was easy, everyone would be doing it. It's not easy. It takes work. It takes time. It takes, sometimes it takes getting up a little earlier, getting into your office, sitting at your desk, focusing. If it's not at your desk, go to a restaurant, order a cup of coffee, take your book, take your, take a um, notebook, write down some notes, constantly be thinking. Do what I do. Buy, buy some studies. It's whatever it takes. Watch some YouTubes. You know, stay focused. Attend classes. There's all kinds of classes. I just got something yesterday from our, our local college here. They're putting on business classes for, for business owners. There's all kinds of stuff to get, to get involved in. So I hope this makes you think a little bit different. I hope you can improve yourself more. Never stop improving yourself. You'll see a difference. It'll make a difference in your life. Your family will see a difference. Your team will see a difference. And I guarantee you, your life will be different if you'll start improving yourself more. I hope this helps. Have a great day. Carry on.